Uh, you know me. Welcome back to another video. <laughs> things that we need to discuss. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to be talking about our Detroit Lions. There's just some things that I want to talk about in Lions world, so let's get it started. You no, know, I got a shout out, Dosa D, uh, man, because it was actually the first time I went live on YouTube. And, uh, you know, guys don't know Dosa D, uh, he put out a lot of good content for the Detroit Lions. Dude, I just realized that my Christmas lights were not on for the entire video. Oh my, I just turned them on because I'm done doing the video. I'm hopping back in here to do a couple of shout outs. The Christmas lights weren't on, but now they're on. They're on for this part. They won't be on after this. I'm so sorry, but you guys can see it from now. So look, we'll turn on the lights for the shout outs. I got to give a couple. First one, shout out to my man, Dwayne. Okay, Dwayne, he's always in the comment section. Shout out to Dwayne. He's been on the show. He's on Saturday Night Lions last week. Unfortunately, we won't have it this week, but he was on it last weekend and he got a mask because he was a Hall of Fame member. I told, you know, Hall of Fame members, man, all you gotta do is hit me up in an email. He got his mask. I don't remember where the picture went, but I have the picture of his mask. If I have it, I'll throw it on the screen. Either way, shout out to Dwayne. I appreciate your support, man. That is awesome. And that mask looking good. Also, shout out to my man, Clutch Swag. He just asked me to do it. And hey, here I am. Shout out to you, Clutch Swag. You got the notifications on. I see you, my boy. Everybody should have him on. And finally, shout out to my man, Isaac Rhodes, and his brother, whose birthday it was, which I am late to currently because I'm slacking on Instagram. But shout out to your brother. Happy birthday to your brother. I know it's a late birthday, but. So you just gonna bring me a birthday gift on my birthday to my birthday party on my birthday with a birthday gift? Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Hopefully the Lions win Sunday for your birthday. All right, that's my shout outs. Get back to the video. Welcome everybody to another video. Glad you guys are here. And yes, we're back for another video to talk some Detroit Lions. And can you guys feel the energy? Okay, it is Saturday, which means the Lions play tomorrow, which means it's game day eve. And yes, people do call it that. And not just me. Maybe just me. But it's okay. Tomorrow, the Lions play the Falcons. You know I'm hyped. Today, Big Ten football is back. Have you guys been watching? Okay, yeah, the Ohio State game. Now, whatever. I thought it was going to be a game for a second, okay? I thought it was. Nebraska was doing some things. I didn't agree with all the calls, but that's not why they lost. It's definitely not why they lost. But it was unfortunate. I was hoping the game would be a little bit closer, but it wasn't. Hopefully the targeting rule gets fixed, though, because I feel like, man, there was just sometimes like, dang, dude, you're like throwing players out, and it's not even like anything's happening. But, again, that's not that doesn't really have anything to do with today's video. I just want to say that. Also, the Michigan State game. I'm sorry, Michigan State fans. I'm pretty sure they lost to Rutgers today. I, I feel bad. Like, honestly, I, I feel bad. That's that's tough. Rutgers, wow. I'm not even trying to hate. I'm just saying, like, that is rough. Michigan plays tonight against Minnesota. So that's, you know, a night game that's exciting. And the reason I bring that up is because we won't be having a Saturday Night Lions tonight. Most likely, there will be no Saturday Night Lions show. I hate to do it, but it's a night game for Michigan, and I'm definitely going to watch that game. The only way it happens is if somehow after the game, I'm still juiced, and, you know, we have everything set up, and I go live afterwards. It's, there's a chance. But I'm just saying, lean to the side if there's probably not going to be a show tonight. But that's okay. There will be a show tomorrow morning for the pregame of the Lions and the Falcons. Obviously, we're going to be live tomorrow as well. So I'll see you guys tomorrow all day. But there probably will be no Saturday Night Lions, which I hate to say it, but I'm, I'm sorry. That's why I'm doing this video because there are some Lions things that I do want to talk about. So let's talk about some Detroit Lions a little bit. There's a couple of stories that I want to discuss here. But the first thing is some Lions news. And this is about safety slash linebacker slash special teamer Miles Killebrew, who will be out. He will be out tomorrow against the Atlanta Falcons for personal reasons. Now, I don't know what those reasons are. I'm not going to dive into detail. I'm not going to speculate. I don't know. Hopefully, everything's okay with him and his family and everybody's healthy and everything's going good. I don't know what it is. So, I'm not going to speculate what it is because it's not my business. But I know he's out tomorrow. So, hopefully, everything is good with Miles Killebrew and, you know, whatever his situation is over there. You know, hopefully, everything's all right. But he will not be playing in tomorrow's game against the Atlanta Falcons. However, there's some other things that we need to talk about. First off, Alex Collins. Now, you guys probably saw in the community, I posted that picture where he visited the Detroit Lions. So yesterday, the Detroit Lions held a visit with running back, free agent running back, Alex Collins. I think we've talked about him before a little while ago. He's a 26-year-old running back. He's coming back from a broken leg injury, but he was a fifth-round pick back in 2016 by Seattle. He's had some pretty good moments in the NFL, and the Detroit Lions bring him in for a visit. At this point, it's kind of a meme because the Lions seem to always be bringing different types of running backs, whether it's the practice squad or visit or whatever it may be and I have no problem with it like know who's out there know the options I got no problem with you working on a running back because maybe you have to bring him in and then you know what you want so you can just go grab him I'm good with that I'm completely good with that I actually think it's a very smart thing to do for the Detroit Lions it's just kind of funny when you see all these names pop up but 
Some people have been speculating this as to, are the Lions shopping Carrion Johnson? That That's kind of been something that people are speculating it to. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, could that have anything to do with Carrion Johnson? Well, the first thing that I wanted to do was look at Carrion Johnson's snap count so far this year. But so far this season, only 26% of the snaps on the field. Only 26%. He seems like he's the third running back on the roster right now. I mean, it kind of seems like that, especially last week when Swift broke out. Early in the year, I thought Carrion was the number one. Peterson came in, took that role over. All of a sudden, Carrion seem to be the number two now all of a sudden it kind of feels like he's the number three running back behind him and swift a little interesting i would say nuggets when it comes to alex collins and him being a running back to someone that visited the detroit lions the first one is when alex collins was drafted which was back in 2016 in seattle he was a fifth round pick daryl bevel was their offensive coordinator that season so you know daryl bevel kind of knows a little bit of him and in that year he averaged four yards per carry and he had 11 receptions on 11 targets Keep in mind, it was only his rookie season, so his snap counts were crazy. Then he ended up going to Baltimore. So Daryl Bevel at least got to see him for one year. So I think the ties there are always something to keep my, an eye on. Also, Bo Scarborough. Bo Scarborough has not been activated from our knowledge, right? He's probably not going to play again. He was the guy that was placed on IR, but it doesn't seem like there's any room for him on the active roster because of our three running backs. So Bo Scarborough hasn't been activated. So why work out a guy like Alex Collins when you still have Bo Scarborough? Alex Collins, if you look at his build, he's a 5 foot 10, 200 plus pound running back. All right, that's a pretty big dude. That's a, that's a pretty bulky guy, right? It's not a little scat back. It's a pretty bulky guy. That's how Alex Collins is built. And you look at Bill Scarborough and that's kind of a similar thing. Like Adrian Peterson, he's six foot one, 220. Okay, so Adrian Peterson is a little bit bigger than Alex Collins. He's taller, he weighs a little bit more, but Alex Collins is not a small running back, right? So it's kind of interesting to see that the Lions would visit Alex Collins. I think it potentially could just be if something does happen during the year that the Lions have something to fall back on. But I would also say keep an eye on Bill Scarborough because he'll ever activate him. Could he be a guy that potentially gets released at some point? Ty Johnson leave, Jason Huntley is gone. So could Bill Scarborough be the next guy? I really don't want to see that. I don't see Bo Scarborough be the next guy but there's a couple of running backs there not only Karen but also Bo Scarborough to keep your eye on here and now let's get into my next point which I think also kind of maybe ties this all together and it's how important this game is Sunday and why it's so important for a lot of different people tomorrow's game is a huge huge game it's more than just one win and one loss tomorrow's game is very very big for the Detroit Lions and there's multiple reasons for that it affects players it affects the team it affects the coaching staff and it affects us as fans tomorrow is a huge game because let's think about this Lions are a two and three team and last week they beat Jacksonville a must-have win for Matt Patricia's job potentially it was a must-have win they looked really good right they beat Jacksonville it looked really good I look at that game as not necessarily a turning point in the season. Hopefully it could be. Maybe we look back and we say it was. But right now, as of now, I look at that as a game-saving season, right? It was that game that you had to have. It was the game that you had to win. You had to beat that team, and Matt Patricia personally needed that win. And I think when you got that, okay, you saved the season. This even season is still alive at two and three. Now this Falcons game, it's not a matter of saving the season, I don't think, tomorrow. But I think the Falcons game is a matter of potentially flipping the season. I think if you beat Atlanta tomorrow, you could flip this season right on its head. And all of a sudden, the momentum that was like, oh no, this season's going to be a mess. All of a sudden, you're right back on track. And you are in... You're almost in the driver's seat. You're feeling really good if you can beat Atlanta. If you could get the back-to-back -back wins on the road, back-to-back -back road wins, which is never easy to do. I don't care who you're playing against. Atlanta, tomorrow, if you can win that game, that changes the season. Now, if you lose, you're not technically out of the race yet. It's going to make it very difficult, but you're not technically out. So I don't think technically the season's over. That's why I don't look at tomorrow's game as a must-win. But it's like one of those games where if you do win, you're all of a sudden looking at the season completely different. Because look at their upcoming schedule. If the Lions could win tomorrow, they could jump to 3-3, three and three, 500. With their upcoming schedule being the Indianapolis Colts, the Minnesota Vikings, the Washington football team, the Carolina Panthers, and the Houston Texans. All of a sudden when you look at that, you see, okay, the Colts, a 4-1 team, a beatable team, very beatable in the uh, Indianapolis Colts. But after the Colts game, you have the Vikings, who already traded away Yannick. They could potentially be basically tanking on a season by the time we play them the first time it's crazy Washington football team they're not a very good team okay I don't mean any disrespect they're just not a very good team the Panthers you know they're like kind of hit and miss right they're kind of hit and miss so that's probably a toss-up and the Texans who knows what they're gonna look like at that time at that time again they could be in the Vikings boat and basically tanking so you have a lot of very very winnable games if you can beat Atlanta but Atlanta's not gonna be a walk in the park I know people get caught up in the record I don't see that with Atlanta I've talked about it this team can play this is going to be a dog fight i think this is going to be a great game i don't see this being a blowout for the lions and i don't hopefully see them blowing us out i think this is going to be super super competitive i think it's going to be a really really good game 
This is a huge game, though, because if you can win this, you can turn the season around. And it's not only big for your upcoming schedule, it's also big for your coaching staff first. Let's talk about the front office. If the front office has a move that they may want to make, that they feel like there's someone available on the trade block where they could be buyers and that could help them and take them to the next level for the remainder of the season, being 3-3 three and three could allow the ownership, the ownership Sheila Ford, to look at this and say, okay, you know what? You guys can make that big trade. You guys can make that big move if you think that's really going to take, the, the, take you to the next step. And she may have more confidence in them because, look, we're 3-3. Three and three. We have wins over a Cardinals team who's going to play Seattle. We'll see a really big test for them. But that win, that win looks pretty darn good right now. On the road in Arizona, that looks pretty darn good. We could have beat the Bears. We played them down to the wire. That would that would look really good. And our, two, and our other losses are the Packers and the Saints. Those are two tough teams. So it's like, okay, if you're three and three, now all of a sudden you could potentially be buyers. And if there's someone that you're interested, even if it is a Quinn and Williams, even that big of a name, all of a sudden you actually may have a chance to legitimately make a big trade to do that. But if you lose, do the Lions ownership even allow you to make that big of a trade knowing that you guys may not be part of the future, that Bob Quinn, Matt, you may not be here. So I'm not going to let you give up a top pick in the draft for someone that my next general manager and head coach may not want. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yep. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why this is such a big game. There's only one week left after Sunday until the trade deadline. It's November 3rd. So you have one full week after Sunday before the trade deadline. And then it's on, I think, Tuesday. It's on Tuesday or Wednesday. That's it. I mean, it's not very far off. So this game is huge for buyers and sellers. Then it's also important for our players. Carry on Johnson. This is where the carry on Johnson point comes in. If, if Lions are realistically potentially looking to potentially shop carry on Johnson, Bob Quinn, whatever it may be. Losing this weekend could actually hurt Carrion Johnson because the Lions could be saying, all right, let's just get a draft pick and then we could sign a different running back, right? That's stuff to keep an eye on here. This is a big win for a lot of people. Everybody's going to be impacted. Of course, we're going to be impacted as fans. We're going to feel good or feel bad depending on the result. But if you win this week, all of a sudden your season looks different because you have five games coming up that are extremely winnable, extremely winnable your next five. Plus, you're after your next five games, you then have an absolute gauntlet with the Bears, the Packers, the Titans, the Bucks, and the Vikings. Not really the Vikings, but four of those five are basically playoff teams. Yeah, They'll, those are some real teams right there. Like, that's legit. So if you can win this game, if you can get back to 500, you can go to your next five playing teams that you're probably going to be favored against. You're probably going to be favored to beat every single team if you beat the Falcons. I think the Lions would probably be favored to beat every team, maybe not the Colts, if you beat the Falcons tomorrow. That's how big this is. Again, I don't think it's a make or break for season, but it's one of those games that could potentially take you from thinking, okay, we might be back on track to all of a sudden, hey, we're back in this thing. We are back in the race. You put that thing in the dang drive, broom, broom, and you stomp on the gas as we roll through these next five games, as we roll through the rest of the season. That's what you're feeling like if you can beat this team. If you can get back-to-back -back wins, and you potentially, because if you get back-to-back -back wins, now all of a sudden you believe, look, we can string these together. We can do this. Like, like, we can do this. Tomorrow's a huge game. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I apologize there's no Saturday Night Lions, but I will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you for watching, and I'm out. Are you kidding me right now? I had to put my helmet on for this one. Are you kidding? Look at this. Look at all these members. What? What? Yo, hey, shout out to all the members, man. Look, look how many all pro members there are. Like, literally, it's the whole screen, dog. This is crazy. The patrons, of course, the Hall of Fame members, man. Y'all got the gold color. It's kind of yellow, but it's supposed to be gold. Shout out to all the members, man. If you want to be a part of this, all you got to do is join the channel. But there are perks that come with it. Stay locked in the community tab if you are a member because that's where a lot of information comes out. I appreciate all of you. What?